Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Today we're back here with Game Theory. It's actually got a YouTuber centric one called The Kaiser Not Won't Survive Another Marathon Stream. Oh boy. I guess this dude's been through a lot, hasn't he? I don't know this guy, Kai, but I'm guessing he must have been playing this game for a long time with a marathon stream. How long? I'm actually kind of curious, so let's just see what happened to him, huh? Be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoyed. Let's see it. Oh, yep, Elden Ring. Hi. Oh, don't break it. Headed. Dead. Oh my god! This is hard as fuck! At some point, you gotta just sit back and think, like, is it me? I think it's me! It might be you. I hate to break it to you, Kai, <laughs> but your friend yeah. is right. Though it's not for the reasons you might think. Oh, we're about to find out. Let's go, Tom. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that knows that gaming is a marathon, not a sprint. And that true. is more true than ever because marathon streams are one of the biggest metas in streaming right now. You know the ones I'm talking about. The I'm not ending stream until I do X. Like Tim the Tapman's not ending stream until I derank in Rainbow Six. Or TBNR Frag's streaming until I hit Unreal rank in Fortnite. Whether <laughs> it's the sheer novelty of these continuous streams or the desire to be there and spam, I was here in chat when it all ends. Something about now, these kinds of streams captures our attention and the newest game to be the subject of these marathon streams is of course the long anticipated dlc for elden ring shadow of the earth tree and it is hard so hard in fact that from software have actually come out with a patch man to they make even it a too. bit easier and this is from the company that is known for making hard games i guess you could call this dlc the dark souls of souls like games it's like the okay. ouroboros eating its own tail and so when streamer kai <laughs> Net announced that he was going to be doing a marathon of the new DLC, people were hyped. And the marathon ended up being quite a oh, ride. Geez. He laughed, he cried, he raged. In fact, a lot. things got so rough for Kai <laughs> that he had to bring in an actual licensed therapist to help calm him down. Which really got me thinking, was there something he could have done differently? Sure, watching Kai bash his head against a wall was no doubt entertaining, and <laughs> what he did was certainly a massive achievement. But I can't help but feel like there were some efficiencies he let go to waste. The only other person who attempted to marathon this DLC, at least at the time of writing, was Ludwig. But he did it in 40 hours less. What was he doing differently? that allowed him to lessen his time in the self-imposed prison. You might think it's all to do with in-game strategy or their builds or their previous experience, but that's not very theorist. Instead, I'm talking about something much less subjective, science. Gaming is more than just getting good after all. Your environment, your sleep, your diet, they can all affect things like your mood, concentration, and reaction times, all things that are essential for a game like this. So was there science Kai could have used in order to save himself hours of heartache? Well, just like any Probably, yeah. Golden Ring player, I too am willing to sink tens of hours into mindlessly grinding away at a task. So grab your enchanted great swords and data charts, because I've got the strats to help Kai, other streamers, and even you fully optimize whatever gaming marathon lies ahead. So first things first. <laughs> well, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if I'll ever do like a marathon stream. Like, I mean, I might do that sometime. I just feel like. Oh, Lord. That's going to be a headache and a half. Sheesh. You know what I mean? Like, I'd probably be setting up a bed, like, right over there. You know, just to get some sleep. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's what's going to happen if I ever do, a, like, a marathon stream. I'd just be like, boom, boom, the bed, just, whoop. <laughs> you know, that. I feel like that's what happened. You know, I'm just saying, gotta take a nap. I mean, heck, when subathons do it, they still find time to sleep. <laughs> I'd probably just <laughs> show you guys be sleeping, though. Anyway. Exactly what data am I collecting and how am I doing it? Well, I yeah. ended up watching all the nearly 100 hours Kai streamed and made notes of anything he was doing outside of the game. Things like when he ate, when he took breaks, what his mental state was. All in order to see whether there was any science that could have been applied to lead to a faster time. I also watched all of Ludwig's yeah, 57 <laughs> hours of stream to see if he somehow subconsciously did follow the science and whether that could have been the reason for his Maybe. faster time. However, 
However, it became very clear that this was going to be a really tough comparison. Elden Ring is an mm -hmm. open world game. There is a ton of optional places to explore. So despite putting in the hours, I needed to limit True. the scope slightly in order to get a fair comparison. So I decided to focus on a very specific part of the run, the DLC's final boss, Radan. Right. Radan is oh, the Radan. primary reason this DLC is so tough. Most people who Go. play the DLC spend half of their time on this guy alone, and Kai and Ludwig were no exception. Plus, both Kai Seriously? and Ludwig reached Radan at around the same point in their run, roughly 31 hours. hours in, so it meant they were going in on a basically even playing field. So with that out of the Fair. way, let's dive into the data. When I initially saw these streams announced, the thing I was worried most about was the amount of sleep they'd actually be getting. I personally love my sleep, but when you've dedicated yourself to streaming until you beat a particular game, I could imagine streamers sure. foregoing adequate sleep time mm. in order to make further progress. Now, I don't think I need to tell sure. you all that sleep is very important for your brain. Virtually all research shows that your brain will stop working at its full potential if you go without sleep. Sleep deprivation, even just a tiny amount, can lead to slower reaction time, smaller attention spans, reduced ability to adapt, and impaired judgment. All things that are critical Oof. for accomplishing difficult tasks. Oh, that's why my GT Live Live performance was so poor. I was just jet lagged and nothing to do with my lack of art skills. Sure. So how much sleep were these guys getting? Ludwig only slept once in his 26 Good. hour run against Rodan, and it was for roughly seven hours. Hard to say for sure because his stream cut out, but providing he did go to bed when he said he did and didn't spend too much time dilly dallying before getting back on stream, he would have been in good shape. Doctors recommend seven to nine hours of sleep in order to avoid the effects of sleep True. deprivation. So Ludwig is just skirting on that line. Kai, however, didn't follow that advice. He oh. definitely laid in bed for eight hours each time he slept, which he did three times across the Redan section of his stream. But if you actually watched Kai sleep, which is creepier now that I'm saying it out loud, but <laughs> it's for science, I promise. Uh -huh. job is so weird. But if you did, and you subtract the time that he spent shifting around to get comfortable or playing on his phone, then you'd realize he only slept for just shy of six and a half hours on the first night and only five and a half hours on the next two. He is getting way less sleep than is required to fight off sleep deprivation, which is likely Oof. what led to some of his worst reaction times. Sleep is also when your brain converts short-term memories you've acquired throughout the day and turns them into long-term memories. Without that rest, all that muscle memory you've been picking up by playing the game over and over and over again, it's just not going to make its way into long-term memory. And so by the time you wake up, your muscles aren't going to remember how to do it properly. So if you want to optimize your streaming marathon with better reaction times, attention spans, and building muscle memory, rule number one is get the full seven to nine hours of sleep. However, it's not like okay. Kai was just grinding during every waking moment. He did slow down and take some regular breaks. In fact, from the moment he started his attempts against Rodan, I counted that Kai took about 43 breaks over his 44 waking hours, roughly one break per hour. These breaks then averaged out at about 18 minutes in length and ranged from checking his phone to eating to watching other streamers. According to research, Kai absolutely nailed the frequency and length of breaks to maximize productivity. Mm. One study found that the most productive really? workers would, on average, work continuously for around 52 minutes before mm. taking 17 a 17 minute break, which is mm. shockingly close to what Kai averaged. This is important huh. because other research has shown that those who take breaks ultimately end up being more focused, less stressed, and make better decisions. In contrast, Ludwig only took 15 breaks over his 27 waking hours, with the average length being just seven minutes seven per minutes. break, which is way below what is recommended to be productive. So why did it take Kai? So maybe the longer breaks contributed to the time? But I'm guessing it's more than the sleep and the break times. I feel like with Kai, like with what we saw, just the, ah, just a, psh, that. You know that dude was going on adrenaline and he was not happy. Like, even I got mad when I was playing Cuphead and I took a minute to be like, okay, this isn't helping, so, you know, expression on my face. I mean, you saw it on my Cuphead stream, you know? When I got to the devil and I was having trouble, like, I felt like I was in a rage and I was like, okay, take a minute just to be right back and just left the room. <laughs> I mean, you gotta know that, like, I mean, when he gets frustrated, you tend to just be, like, stuck in a pattern and just kind of builds up. I can attest, since I was playing Cuphead, I mean, I'm not sure I'll ever get to Elden Ring, yeesh. But, yeah, like, once I cooled down and, like, figured, like, okay, it's probably the music, so 
took the headphones off, and was just back to gaming. And once that was done, I pretty much breezed through the DLC of the Delicious Last Course, so... <laughs> staying calm definitely helps, so... Taking breaks, got some sleep, and just staying calm. <laughs> anyway so much longer because it's not all about the length or frequency of breaks it's about the quality, quality. not mm. all breaks are made equal what you do during those breaks can often make just as much of a really? difference if not hmm. more than how often you take them so for example they getting do? up and moving is significantly better for your brain's function and this isn't just true for those who spend their days in cubicles we also have data on the effects of breaks on gamers specifically new york really? tech center for esports medicine a center i That's I cannot believe exists. What a no world kidding. we live in. They looked at the effect that a walking break can have on a gamer's performance. They took 21 gamers and had them play a video game continuously for about two hours. At the one hour mark, the gamers were asked to either take no break, lay down for six minutes, or walk around for six minutes. Those who took the walking break showed both significantly better reaction and planning times huh. than even those who had the rest break. One of the participants summed really? up the benefits perfectly. Quote, the walking break definitely has the best impact on gaming performance. It helps you to clear your mind while doing something physical. Even if you're walking slowly, it helps yeah. you calm down and forget the high pressure from the gaming environment. Your brain isn't going definitely overboard use anymore. The treadmill and Ludwig actually can. did do this. Not every time, but he did get up and walk around occasionally, which likely added to his success. If Kai had done the same, then he might have just been able to walk free from his streams faster than he would have expected. Instead, he did something that research has shown to be the the worst kind of break, browsing social media. During several of his breaks, Kai would whip out his phone to check Twitter or TikTok. He even slipped in a couple of phone looks between his attempts against Radan. Taking breaks to look at your phone only serves to mess with your brain and make you less really? productive. A study in the Journal huh. of Behavioral Addictions found oh, that participants who break. took a break to check their phone took 19% longer to complete their assigned tasks and finished 22% oh. less work than those who didn't check their phone. Huh. On top of that, those who checked their phones did significantly worse than even those who took a break on their computer, which was the approach Ludwig took, watching other streamers on his computer. All in all, when it comes to breaks, even though Kai took breaks more frequently and for longer, that advantage was completely washed away by how he spent his break time. Therefore, so no if you were completing some okay. sort of long-term task, make sure you were taking breaks every hour and also use this time to get up, move those legs, and please leave the box of distractions as far away from you as possible. Stepping away <laughs> from breaks. While it is important to fuel your brain with decent rest, it's also important to fuel it with literal fuel. 73% of your brain is made up of water. So staying fully hydrated is super important to keeping your wits about you. And I know it sounds cliche. Everyone and their grandmother tells you to drink more water, but there's actually a very good reason for that. Drinking more water has been huh? shown to improve your cognitive function, reaction times, and your mood. Something that Kai clearly Really needed improved. Why are you healing? Why are you healing? Why are you healing? Meanwhile, not drinking water has been shown to inhibit your memory, your alertness, and your focus. And these effects aren't just limited to severe dehydration either. Being just 2% dehydrated can impair your performance in a whole range of mental tasks. Now, to be clear, huh. both streamers could have used a little bit more fluid in their diet. However, Ludwig True. was the only one drinking outside of meals. Specifically, he was drinking from this glass bottle with a yellow label. Doing a bit of online digging, I found that this was a yeah, bottle of Topo Chico mineral water. So kudos there, you did do something right, Ludwig. Meanwhile, the but only drink the I saw Kai reaching for was Bang Energy Drink, which yes, has water in it, but it also contains uh, other yeah. ingredients like caffeine, which is great for improving your reaction time and cognitive performance in the short term, but it can also make you jittery. So while playing a game that requires absolute precision and perfect timing like Elden Ring, that may not be the greatest side effect to put up with. And that's not the only downside. True. Caffeine is also what is known yeah. as a diuretic. Basically, it means you pee more. Therefore, you are eliminating the water from your body much quicker, losing all of the benefit Oof. the water in that drink provides. So while in the short term, a caffeinated beverage might help push you through the last you couple might. of hours of a shift, in the end, it will make you jittery and will ultimately lead you to losing water faster. Instead, you can get nearly all the cognitive benefits with none of the downsides just by drinking classic H2O when you're thirsty. Now, I spent a lot of time going into the nitty gritty of the different approaches Kai and Ludwig have taken throughout their streams. But if you watched any of the streams for yourselves, you'll probably know there was one difference that was a little easier to spot. 
break? I don't need one. No! I'm not doing this one, bro. I'm done. I'm done. Leave me the f alone! Leave me alone! No! Yeah, Kai got a little heated, Animated. shall we say. <laughs> now, anger and frustration are obviously normal emotions, especially when you're dying to the same boss again and again and again. But while you may be losing True. the game, losing your cool doesn't do your brain any favors. Anger, especially stress-related anger, activates the emotional parts of your brain like the amygdala and triggers that fight or flight response, which in turn limits our ability to think. And in the case of Kai, if the source of your anger is the thing that you must overcome in order to free yourself, that ends up creating a pretty vicious cycle. Yeah. He plays, <laughs> gets angry, it limits his brain's ability to think clearly, and which leads to him playing more. worse, meaning he loses again, and the next thing you know, you're talking to a therapist with a PlayStation <laughs> controller in your hand. But you might be thinking, Kai is letting out his anger. Isn't that better than keeping it bottled up? Well, as it turns kinda out, the yes, more you no. vent your anger, the angrier you actually become. Brad Bushman, a senior researcher and professor hmm. from Ohio State University, said that venting anger might sound like a good idea, but there's not a shred of scientific evidence to support catharsis theory, i.e. the idea of getting oh. it off your chest. He goes on to say it's really a battle because angry people want to vent, but our research shows that any good feeling we get from venting actually reinforces aggression. Basically, by letting out your aggression, oh. you get that sense of catharsis and positive release in the moment, so that teaches your brain oh. to get angry again in order to receive that same positive feeling. On the flip side, oh. bottling up your anger and never addressing it can be just as bad. Holding on to anger leads to a buildup so... of the stress hormone cortisol. This stress hormone can lead to problems with attention, decreased mental processing, or muddled thinking. Once again, all the things we're trying to hmm. avoid. So that leads... So basically, find a way to safely, or at least creatively, get rid of it? Instead of venting just like aggressively, or just bottling it up. Which, yeah, makes sense. Like, I didn't smash anything like I, like like I did with the controller. I mean, I was about to, but I was like, wait, no, still need that. <laughs> so it was basically just put the controller down and just take a minute to recapitulate or whatever the word is, you know. So I just realized I never picked up my controller from when it fell off the floor. Don't worry, didn't smash it. <laughs> Resident Evil wasn't that bad. I mean, like I said, three attempts and that was all it took. <laughs> Sorry about that, but yeah, like I said, sometimes it's best to figure out, okay, there's gotta be a better way to release, so walk away, fine, anyway. Is the question, what is the healthy way to overcome inevitable anger? The answer mm. is doing exactly what Ludwig did, calming down. Sophie Sharvek, a mm. postdoctoral fellow at the Virginia Commonwealth University, noticed the rise of things like rage rooms, places where people are mm. encouraged to vent their frustrations for a nominal fee. So she decided yeah. to do a meta-analysis of over 150 studies on over 10,000 participants to find the best ways to cope Ooh. with anger. A theorist after my own heart. Look at all those numbers. But what she found, is that the best thing you can do is to carry okay. out activities that lower your arousal levels, not give in to them. Activities like running, yeah. using a punching bag, and cycling were much less effective at controlling anger than activities oh? meant to decrease arousal, like deep breathing and meditation. So the fact that Kai is oh. so quick to let out his frustration mm. is wiring his brain to remain on high alert, and he's never getting a chance to truly rest. That in turn leads to decreased oh, cognitive yeah, function, like prolonging his run, which stuff. makes him yeah. Angrier. This is why Kai's therapist repeatedly tried to get him to calm down and breathe to little success. I hate this game! But when Ludwig felt like he was getting heated, he took a five minute break where he walked away from the computer, getting his brain out of high alert and allowing him to recenter and focus. So if you end up being faced with a challenge, be it Elden Ring or work or just something that gets your blood boiling, instead of letting it all out, use techniques that can help calm you down like deep breathing, walking or listening to lo-fi like the one you're hearing right now. This is actually from our new project, Lorefi. Oh yeah, Lorefi. I've been hey. listening to it while I've been writing this episode and despite watching all of the rage in front of me, I cannot tell you how much karma I feel. You can listen to it right now for free over on Spotify. There will be a link in the huh. description. Take a listen, and I'm sure that next time you're faced with a challenge, you will be karma and ready to take on anything. Maybe I should send this playlist to Kai for his next stream, because throughout this one, Kai made yeah, several choices that. in the way he treated his brain that almost guaranteed that he'd never be able to beat this DLC. You can even see it when you plot Kai's attempts on a graph. That's right, oh. I went 
went back and watched the stream again and counted the amount of times he died, pausing each time he did die to measure what percentage of Radan's HP he got through. And if you take a look, you'll see he didn't improve much at all over the course of his run at Radan. In fact, if you look at just the first full day of attempts at the big guy, Kai somehow got yeah, just worse as the day low. went on. But spoiler alert, Not despite all 40. his disadvantages, he does eventually conquer his demons and slay Radan. The question is, what changed? Well, if you pay close attention yeah. to the graph, you'll notice that Sorry, around good. attempt 360, oh, something lovely, shifts. Too. Suddenly, there is a pretty big spike in Kai's performance, a spike that he was able to sustain and then build upon, leading to him oh. eventually defeating Radan. So I went back to my notes to see what was happening, and I noticed Kai did something that I wasn't expecting. He good. listened. After 79 hours of streaming, 48 of which were on this boss alone, he slowly started listening to the mm. advice his chat was offering. Wait, does Thorny make you get like, if you consecutively keep hitting you get higher damage? Oh. Yo, I hit him for 4,000! With their help, he developed a build Thorny. and strategy Ooh. that allowed him oh. to consistently get through the first phase of the fight with very little <laughs> effort. When that worked, Kai oh, suddenly geez. was on the upward swing. Just 20 attempts later, he got through half of Radan's health for the first time. 20 attempts after that, Kai gets a personal best, getting through Ooh. two thirds of his health. This isn't just down to chat having six strats either. Asking for help required Kai to put his trust in someone other than himself. And science has proven that when we do that, something interesting happens. When our trust is paid off, our brains release a chemical called oxytocin, otherwise known as oh. the love hormone. love hormone. Now, I'm not saying that Kai was suddenly in love with his chat, though I suppose you could argue that. But oxytocin has <laughs> other very important uses. Specifically, it plays a role in the process of that. neurogenesis, the creation oh. of new neurons and neural pathways, allowing him to find new <laughs> techniques and remember them. Why? Because oxytocin has also been shown to help protect oh. our hippocampus from stress. The hippocampus is where long-term <sighs> memories live in our brains. And so by accepting help from chat and from a licensed therapist, then having it pay off, he was able to regain some of what he'd been losing from his lack of sleep. The he stress just, of his one failed of the, like, run weren't like, being stored in like, long-term well, memory. That work. <laughs> Instead, he was just able to take what he'd learnt and apply it, creating new neuro pathways in his brain, allowing him to get better and better until eventually, after 99 hours of struggle and over 1,000 deaths, he finally did it. Yes! There you go. He didn't sleep enough, he didn't take the right kind of breaks, he didn't drink his water, and he couldn't keep his cool. But he did know when to put his pride aside and accept help when the chips were down. Who knows, he might still be fighting Radan today if he hadn't looked to others for help. Shout out, no kidding. And a lot of people f***ing made fun of him for being dog f***ing. And to be fair, he was dog f***ing when he started. Wow. <laughs> so good. And I guess that's my final piece of advice to True. Kai Just or can't. Ludwig or to anyone who decides to lock themselves in a room until they have to beat whatever task it is they choose. If you want to optimize your marathon, the best thing you can do is realize that while you may be stuck in a room, there are plenty of people around you who aren't, and they are there to help you. Because let's be honest, none of us can truly do anything alone. But there you have sure. it, theorists, my five-step guide to optimizing marathon streaming or work tasks or homework or anything that requires you to stay locked in a room for multiple days. Make sure you get your seven to nine hours of actual sleep, not just time in bed. Take regular breaks and when you do don't spend it on your phone or social media remember to drink plenty of water with no additives especially caffeine when things get tough keep your cool and find ways to manage your stress get up go for a walk around the room and finally if things do seem impossible don't be ashamed ask to for ask help. for help and kai if you're watching a huge congratulations on your victory you not only made something entertaining but inspiring you inspired ludwig he can do it i can maybe do it and i did it i did it thank you kai you inspired me to make this episode and in return i hope that i've inspired you so that the next time you decide to marathon stream which might actually be right now if you haven't been bloodborne yet Could regardless be, oh you'll be fully equipped to tackle actually, any challenge be, that comes now. your way check Just them out. next time maybe stay Just... off your phone and please for the love of millennia drink some water but hey that's yeah, just a theory water. a game theory thanks for watching and if elden yeah that does sound about right you gotta calm down man I'm gonna actually check to see if Kai's doing Bloodborne right now. I'm actually kinda curious to see how far he is. But for now, thanks for watching, guys. Adios.